Samsung's latest budget phone, the Galaxy A16 5G is here everybody and my team and I have been testing it for the past week. It is the successor to last year's A15 5G which if you remember was one of the highest selling phones globally. The A16 5G has launched for a starting price of 19,000 rupees in India or some $200 and I was able to pick one from Flipkart at just 17,000 rupees. And for this price, I believe there are a lot of good things to talk about here as well as a lot of bad things about this budget Samsung. Okay, let me start with the good things first and design here is definitely solid. It's not glass but Samsung has nailed the build quality, the looks, the hands-on feel and all very very well. This new gold color also looks quite nice if you ask me. And the thing with Samsung phones is from budget to mid-range to flagship, they all look the same. So the A16's got premium clean looks too. This year, Samsung has made sure to provide an official IP54 rating as well, which was missing on the A15. Um, Samsung has not specified what kind of glass protection there is on the front though. And as a matter of fact, Samsung phones don't come with a pre-applied screen protector. So make sure you get a good aftermarket screen guard so that you don't end up with scratches or a cracked screen. The second good thing about the A16 5G, at least when it comes to the core quality, definitely has to be its display. Especially the color reproduction here looks really pleasing. This screen is sufficiently bright as well, which means outdoor visibility is not a problem at all. And the touch response here is pretty good too. I do wish Samsung had upgraded to a 120Hz screen though. This one only has 90Hz screen and that too it's not adaptive, which means you can either run the phone at 90Hz or 60Hz. The phone is not capable of auto-selecting the refresh rate like most budget Chinese phones, which is a little disappointing. Also, there is no HDR video playback support here, neither on YouTube nor on OTT platforms. And while other brands are providing nice punch hole notches and slim bezels, Samsung is still living in 2020 with these large chunky bezels and a water drop notch. Likewise, you only get a single speaker setup here. Uh, the quality of this speaker is not bad per se, it uh, mostly focuses on the highs and there is no distortion in the high volumes but it definitely misses the impact of stereo speakers and sometimes it just sounds quite black. Now I know it sounds all bad but to compensate for all the things that Samsung has missed on the E16 5G, the company has provided a nice set of cameras. I would go as far as to say that this is the best budget camera phone for photography right now. The main thing is the color reproduction in images is really nice and pleasing to look at and the phone is able to maintain good contrast, dynamic range and details as well. Samsung has not provided OIS here so if your hands are a little shaky, chances are you might end up with blurry images but with a steady pair of hands you can get some good images for social media. Even when it comes to human subjects, the skin tone and background blur is quite pleasing. Uh, I do wish Samsung had provided a 2x option for portraits for better subject focus and depth of field but even without it, the portraits are nice so I won't complain much. And if you're someone who likes looking selfies, you will be impressed with the pictures from this phone. The colors, the background exposure etc are quite well handled by the A16 5G. Nighttime images are equally impressive. In fact, using the night mode makes the images even more balanced. However, there are two things that I would like to point out. First, the A16's new low-res 5 megapixel ultra wide angle images are quite average with little details to look out for, especially during nighttime. And there is no night mode option for ultra wide photos as well, which means you might get pretty bad ultra wide angle images at night. Second, the videography aspect is quite average too since there is no 4K recording option. The max you can shoot at is 1080p. Uh, in this resolution, the videos aren't as detailed but the stabilization is good nonetheless thanks to EIS. And if you're someone who's even a little bit interested in gaming, don't get this phone. Here, we only get a pretty basic Dimensity 6300 chipset with which the maximum FPS you can get even in low tier games like Mech Arena and Mobile Legends is like 30 to 40 FPS and the graphics just look okay. You can play PUBG at around 40 FPS but you will notice some stutters here and there and after a while the phone starts heating up too. 
normal everyday performance is good and even multitasking with three to four light apps is not a problem but if you get this phone please be prepared for slightly slower app load times uh, let's just say this is not the fastest phone that you can get under 20,000 right now the software side of things is quite impressive though even though this is a budget phone Samsung has provided full-fledged one UI here with Knox security secure folder and all included and not to forget this phone will receive six years of OS updates which even some flagship phones don't provide this means if you're a light user this phone is going to run for many many years and its resale value is also going to be good plus this is also good for the environment and the whole sustainability thing because since this phone will get updates till 2030 which means people are not going to throw it away uh, some kid or your future child might actually be using this phone just to play like games or watch videos okay next i have to say the battery life on this phone is satisfactory too it's 5000 mAh battery lasted for an entire day for me without any trouble even on heavy usage so that's good the a16 5g supports 25 watt charging but like with all samsung phones you will have to cash in extra for the charger um i used my u green power delivery charger to charge this phone and it took around one hour and 30 minutes to completely juice it up from zero to 100 percent so would i recommend the a16 5g well despite having a relatively slow performance this is a decent samsung offering on a budget uh, yes, the price is a bit higher, but with Samsung phones, we always pay a premium because of the brand value, software support, and after-sale services. Overall, here you are getting a nice design, an excellent set of cameras for photos, a good AMOLED screen, six years of OS updates, and a modern design. So yeah, not a bad value. So everybody, that was all for my full review of the Samsung Galaxy A16 5G. If you have any further questions about this device, do let me know in the comments. And while you're there, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Saying this, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I'll see you in my next video.